Uh, and I want to turn my attention to a disorder, a very rare uh, disorder called Klein-Levin syndrome. Um, this is a, a disease that strikes uh, in adolescence, typically, uh, or late childhood. Uh, and we don't know the cause of it, but the people that develop it uh, basically develop excessive sleepiness, and they sleep f for you know, 20 hours or more a day. They have behavioral changes, they're in a dreamlike state, uh, and they have these intermittent episodes where they have a spell that can last weeks to months at a time, and then they'll come out of it, and they'll be normal for a while. And then they'll have another spell. And this will go on and on and on and on over many years. And I want to show you a video of a patient of mine who we have here tonight, Alana Wong, uh, who's kind enough to join us to share her experience with this disease with us. First, I'm going to show you a, a video that she's provided me of her when she's suffering from this disease. And then we'll have her come up and explain, uh, explain her uh, symptoms. I feel like I'm in a dream. I feel like I'm in a dream. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I threw up five times. You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you I'm going to make Mom a pretty picture. A pretty picture? Really? Yeah. What up? Flowers and trees and a heart. How come you're going to make Mom a picture? Because I want to. Mm -hmm. I want you. No! Are you getting tired? No! Huh? I think you're getting tired, honey. Nobody likes me! Oh, come here. She hates me! She loves you. She said she hates me! She would never say that. She did do say that! Come here. Nobody likes me! It's just completely different. It's not even the same person. Okay, Alana, would you come up, please? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. So uh, maybe you can just uh, share with us uh, your experience with this disorder. I mean, tell us, you know, when did it come on? Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? Uh, that, that type of thing. Yeah. Definitely. I got KLS when I was 10 years old, and from 10 to 14, it was very light. So the symptoms came in, and it wasn't so severe. And from 15 to 21, it was very severe, and episodes were constant. And each time I would wake up from an episode, I have no memory of the episode. So if, for instance, if I fall asleep on February 1st and wake up on February 22nd, that whole time is completely wiped out. So I will not remember. I will wake up and think it is the day that I fell sick on February 1st. So it's a very devastating disorder. So, you know, when, when people have this disorder, where they're, when they're in the throes of it, like in this video, uh, they, they appear to be sleeping all this time. Um, but, but what does the sleep feel like when you're, when you're in an episode versus sleep you're having, per, let's say, now when, when you're not affected? Mm -hmm. When I'm in an episode, the sleep is completely different than when I'm awake. Right now, when I'm awake, I have a normal sleep, and I feel compl completely normal. My brain is healthy, and when I'm sick, it's like I'm in a dream state 24-7 and a nightmare state 24-7. So I'm, I'm not able to differentiate between reality and not. So if my mom's in the room asking me, Alana, what do you want for dinner? I'm not sure if she's actually there or if I'm actually dreaming it, if she's asking me that question. Uh, sometimes when folks are affected by this illness, they'll uh, have what we call hyperphagia. They'll, they'll eat ravenously. Is that something that happens to you? Yes, that has happened to me. And um, it's devastating because during episodes, you have no memory of the time spent, so I can wake up and I'll gain 10 to 15 pounds and have no memory of what I had ate during that episode. Some of you may have heard of this disorder. That, another term that, that people use is uh, sleeping beauty syndrome. Alana, how do you feel about that term to describe this illness? I think sleeping beauty syndrome sounds like it's a very 
pretty illness and it does not give Klein-Levin syndrome justice. Klein-Levin syndrome is not a choice. It's a physical illness that is inside the brain. So it's, it's an organic problem. There are tests that have been done that have shown there is a 30% blood reduction going to the hypothalamus during episodes. So. When you see the video of yourself uh, affected by this, this illness, how do, what, what, do you, what goes through your mind? It's very difficult on me to see myself like that because that's not who Alana is. That's not me. And it's, it's a part of me. KLS is a part of me. It's something that happened to me. But KLS is an illness that unfortunately can happen to anyone in this world. And it happened to me. It's, so. it's very rare. I mean, we, we estimate it to be about a one in a million uh, disease. The prevalence might be higher than that, however, because I think a lot of uh, kids that get affected by this end up getting uh, diagnosed with an atypical depression or a psychotic depression, and they often end up uh, in mental institutions. What, what, was, what happened to you when, when you were first having these symptoms? How long did it take you to get a diagnosis? I went undiagnosed for eight years, and it was very devastating during those times from 10 to 18. I went to countless doctors, and I was misdiagnosed and mistreated. I was put on um, antidepressants that made my Klein-Levin syndrome worse, and um, I, I was di misdiagnosed with everything under the sun, possible schizophrenia, depression, and finally, at 18, I found out what it was that I had. Um, you know, I, I think when we uh, see, you know, when I see Alana, I'm just amazed by the support that her family has given her. Um, clearly, the only way that you get through this disorder is to have a, a tremendous support system um, and, and good care, because there's really not much you can do to treat it. So you need to under the family needs to understand the illness and, and really, um, you know, help you through it, rather than get. Uh, isolate you further because it, you're, it seems like something that you should be able to, to control. Yes, and that's the devastating part about Klein-Levin syndrome is it is so rare and the behaviors change in your brain. So your behaviors change, but it's not who you are. KLS is a part of me, but it's not me. I'm the Lana right now. This is me. And when I'm sick, it, there's no control whatsoever. And it's critical when you're going through Klein-Levin syndrome or any kind of illness to have a support system and to have at least just one person standing by you that loves you, cares about you, and will be there during your lowest times. Alana, anything else you want to convey to the audience about this illness? Yes, I would like people to know that despite going through a difficult challenge and uh, you know a devastating illness that you can get through it with a support system in place and with people that surround you and, and wrap their arms around you and you are able to prosper and have a good life. Thank you very much. Alana will stick around and be available for questions after Ed's talk. So Alana, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Watson. So this is Alana's uh, functional MRI study. And as she mentioned, um, that there was hyperperfusion or reduced blood flow in an area of her brain uh, called the hypothalamus. But, but there's also an area of the brain called the thalamus where there's reduced blood flow. And that's what, what I'm showing here. You can see on, on this side, on uh, your left, this is when she, at a time when she was not affected by the disease. This is an area of the brain called the thalamus in here. And if you compare this uh, perfusion study, this blood flow here to this, you can see that there's a substantial reduction. And um, we also see reductions in other areas of the brain, including uh, temporal lobes, mesial temporal lobes, orbitofrontal lobes, uh, basal ganglia. But what we believe is that it's really mostly the thalamus uh, being affected, which is what's causing the problem uh, in people that have uh, this illness, and the thalamus is a, a fascinating part of the brain.